Hello there, this is going to be a review of the MLD Duomid, Mount Laurent Designs Duomid and so I have to say a few things, one, I'm sort of disappointed because I'm not pitching the tent in my garden I'm sorry, this is a freaking review of the actual thing, the tent in the wild where it's supposed to be second point, I've been testing this tent for two weeks but I didn't test it against strong winds, only moderate winds and third thing, I've tested the tent in Scotland so if you look somewhere else you can watch the video but I've tested it in Scotland so what I say apply to my experience in Scotland my first tent was an MSR Access 2 uh, my second one was a CPAX Examit tarp with doors I'm very happy with that one but anyway we're talking about this guy so pitching, easiness of pitching the thing is super easy to pitch and it's just super quick I love that side of things. Now, when the ground is flat, the moment there's a little bump here and there, they even tell you in the description of on the instructions how to pitch the tent. Usually the problem is when the corners are not to 90 degrees. 90 degrees. So the moment there's a little bump here or there, it's harder to get those corners right. So you're gonna have to fiddle a little bit here and there with the tent. Still fairly easy, but it's not like what I had in mind that oh I'm just gonna avoid all these poles and things from my MSR tent and I'm just gonna put four stakes it's gonna be fantastic it's not it's still gonna take time yes I will perfect the pitching and I will figure it out better in the future I would still say it's very easy because you can literally put four stakes I had this MSR ground hooks and the thing will move from here you can take a caterpillar run over this and the tent stays there really and it's freaking solid, I have to say. It, it really is solid. So when it comes to winds, I put it this way, just to cut the thing short. Light winds, there are no winds in the tent. Moderate winds, it feels like light winds. Period, that's the way to put it. You may not extrapolate that to strong winds because it's not a linear uh, progression. Maybe strong winds feel different in the tent. I didn't test it. I'm not gonna speak about it, but yeah. Um, the material, this is the DCF1 camo uh, version, it's a little bit thicker I think, 0.67 if memory serves, it usually doesn't, so check the description. Now, I read that this uh, keeping fiber is extremely water repellent, thin. look, if you are tired, if you have a tight budget, go for silk nylon, period, and I don't care what you think, I'm just talking about my experience tight budget sell nylon it's not worth saving for the DCF thing it's not worth it really I'm very happy with it but if I was in a tight budget and I had saved to pay the extra money for that I would hate my life really because I don't think it's worth the extra money if you really have to make a very strong like a extra effort thing like if it's difficult for you to pay for it just go sell nylon and you'll be you'll be happy really what I like about the material, I think it feels a little bit more water repellent or proof, water proof than cell nylon. I'm just talking basically about when you go in the morning and you put the tent down and it's in Scotland with this uh, dawn, it's, the environment tends to be wet and humid. So any, every tent is always humid in the morning. It's hardly ever the tent is dry. Obviously, there's a lot of where you pitch your tent, this and that, but in Scotland, if it didn't rain, I mean, it will rain as you put the tent down, and seriously, it's gonna be wet, 90% chances. So, I would say slightly better than silk nylon when it comes to not absorbing that much water. Slightly better, sort of better. Again, in a tight budget, I don't think it's that much better to pay for it if you're in a tight budget. I'm making the point a lot because, again, if, if, if I had to say for the thing, I don't think I would feel the difference so much. Now, if it's true that it doesn't stretch, um, I would say so. I think this material doesn't stretch. I think that is true. It's not bullshitting anyone. Um, because the, the bloody tent is all, always as tight no matter for how long it's been pitched. I'm pretty happy in that regard. And then, yes, a little bit lighter, 100 grams, it's not worth it.
I think with this camo version it's even less than 100 grams so in that regard uh, you know it's just an energy bar lighter no big deal and easiness of attaching your guidelines because the tent comes with the, the cords the guidelines but you need to attach them I think they do it so that you do it your own way because some people I guess people that buy this tent have more experience so they like to do their own thing and choose their own guidelines one not personally I prefer C packs that the tent just can ready to go and um, but I have to say I just Google a couple of um, videos in YouTube and and it was easy what else um, yeah the li liveability in the tent well you don't have an inner tent and I have to say obviously this is not major season otherwise I wouldn't be here wouldn't be making this video and I would be at home back in London but other than major season um, really I don't care so much there was one night where I think I pitched somewhere in a spider net and there were these tiny black spiders and there were a few more that I would have liked to see and so um, I put a head net, a Mitch's head net that I always carry with me just in case and I put it to sleep and here and there overnight I took a look to see if there were spiders here and there I was a bit paranoid about the little spiders I didn't see any I'm still alive so I think you get used to and you just progressively get used to not having an inner tent and so far I don't think it's a big deal unless it's mosquito season or like bug season like in summer I just don't care so much and we're in May so far so good but I understand in some places where it gets full of mosquitoes it can be a pain so yeah you can get the inner I think if you have the attitude it's just really nice not to have the inner tent because it connects you with nature you feel closer to nature this is a thermal rest uh, x light whatever everyone knows this thing so just for a record you can just get to see the thing and so we avoid these centimeters inches and stones confusion one thermal rest okay that's the freaking left of the tent one freaking thermal rest if you don't have one i'm sure your friend has one if your friend doesn't have one just ask thermal rest and they'll send you one just to measure the length and then you just ship it back to them now what's the deal here it's a single wall tent so you will get condensation more often uh, so far so good i use this pound so just wipe a little bit in the areas that i'm gonna be touching and it's very easy that's that uh, second point if you get a condensation and you your sleeping bag remember this is a winter tent as well so you may have a pretty big sleeping bag i will put a video tonight so uh, it's hard to say uh, there is room hard to say holy crap this thing there is room enough there is room enough to for a winter sleeping bag as well I'm very picky when it comes to having a flat surface to sleep I have to say fairly quickly I figure out where the tent is gonna be in relation to the spot where I want to sleep and so far um, I would say so good I'm nailing it in very short time so um, you wanna sleep closer to the uh, trekking pole why because you want to have more headroom here for the record, I'm 177, 78 centimeters. I will put the stone inches or whatever on the screen so that you know. And you can figure it out. But I'm just gonna show you real quick. Um, so now the thermal rest is literally one inch from the dragon port, just for reference. And you can see there will be room for my sleeping bag uh, this is a size 10 and a half US and 9 and a half UK and I think some others the size and yeah that's room I'm going to show you what kills me about this tent bear with me because it's a bit complicated to film it while so basically if I'm sitting on my if I'm sitting here I don't know if you get to see it on the thermal rest where you're going to be sitting and this is the distance to the trekking pole see 
So if I'm sitting here, like the way you would sit, then if you get to reach this with both hands and do the buckle, I think, I think you are a freaking yoga teacher. No kidding. Now, okay, let's say that you adopt a different position. You sort of lie down like this. Yeah, you can do it, but again, you need to reach over there. It's pretty further away with both hands and then you can do it. Let me see if I can show you. You can just go about like this and then, oh, and then you do it. Even to reach uh, to the end, you need to just look at me. See what I mean? It's just, I'm in a, this awkward position. I haven't figured out myself a better way to do this freaking buckle. And it's just super annoying to close it. Opening it is better. Oh. It's better because you just need one hand. So, but seriously though, um, I'm instead of making fun of this, it's a bit of a pain in the ass. It's all relative. If I didn't mind to go with my dirty, smelly socks here, um, things would change. Now the problem I have with going there again is that this is not a dry environment and everything is wet. So I get my socks wet more than they are now. And then I get all these little pieces of leaves attached to my socks. I just like to be clean, especially when I cannot do a laundry for a week. I like to be clean. And so I always have to find my way placing objects in a way that I can freaking do the buckle or undo it or close the zipper all the way down. I find it annoying. It just to me, it's annoying. Maybe you are a ninja and then you have your ninja move and it's fantastic. Maybe you spend longer time with a tent and you figure a better way. I'm like, I'm sure in time, eventually I will find my ninja move to close the, f the freaking buckle. This is my backpack. And as you can see, there's still room. It's on the ground, but you have a lot of room. And by a lot of room, I mean, see, a lot of room. Oh yeah, I also tested it against the rain. What a surprise, right? This brings me actually to a point I was gonna forget about the ground shit and the camp selection. You need to pay more attention with these tents. If you don't have a bathtub, um, because it does a little bit of gradient and overnight after pulling them for, for a while does a bit of a stream towards you, you're gonna be in big trouble basically. So imagine if there if there's a bit of a stream coming down here, how easily it can go through my just over my ground sheet. And one of the nights I had a few little puddles under my um sleeping pad that's something to keep in mind i think my next implementation will be to just buy a bathtub you want to have a bathtub in case you know there's this gradient thing or it's boggy which happens often the freaking ground is boggy not just wet boggy like boggy is a bit like a swamp so i think for scotland this tent a bathtub is a is a not a must it's the safe option if you don't mind your sleeping, um, your sleeping bag to get wet overnight and then try to dry it in a hostel or something in the following day, then, then you don't need it. I know a lot of reviewers say, oh, because I dry my sleeping bag. Okay, um, you know, this reviews for Scotland. You don't dry your sleeping bag the next day. There's not gonna be a freaking next day with sun for you to dry your sleeping bag. Even if it's freaking sunny day, it will be humid and cold throughout the day. Your sleeping bag ain't gonna dry unless you put it in a dryer. So, I mean, it's just the way it is. Maybe a bit exaggerating, but seriously, very little exaggeration here. I was rushing through the review because um, I don't have a place to charge my batteries. And we all know in these full frame mirrorless cameras, batteries go flat very quickly and I have five 
but I've done quite a bit of filming and I still want to film some tonight and tomorrow so I hope this was helpful I, I will probably edit this and add a few points when I get back home when I'm calm and I go through things that maybe you know I didn't come across now like this freaking thing like I'm just gonna head back the door <laughs> because it doesn't stay in place yeah you have a hook there you need both hands to do the goddamn hook I think in most tense it's the same so yeah no complaints there and yeah can you believe the freaking sun is up now just because I said it happy days mm -hmm.